You are listening to The Michael Lodge Show. Wealth, business, and taxes. Oh, yeah, and some politics. Let's get started. And welcome. I'm glad that you're here. Do you have your cup of coffee? I don't have one. I would have had a cup of coffee, but I ran out of creamer, and that's so important to me. That's life-threatening when I run out of creamer. But listen, we uh, I'm going to talk just a little bit because I'm upset of what's happening with California. I'm upset with a state that is so diversified is destroying itself. Now, I'm going to tell you right up front. I was born in California. <clears throat> I was raised in California. I love California. I started my businesses in California. California had always been home base for me up until 2019 when I was literally forced out of a state that I love. Taxes were too high. The red tape of or in the cost of doing business in California just got too high. And I had to make a decision. And so I chose to move to a tax-friendly state. And I chose Florida. I could have chosen Texas. I could have chosen Arizona, Nevada, one of those other states that do not have a state tax. I could have cut my expenses in half. In fact, there, there was a study that was done just a few years ago that stated that if you moved from California and over into Texas, you literally saved 32% your first year. <clears throat> Can you imagine that? 32% down at the bottom line the first year of being in a different state, apart from California, where you have the highest corporate taxes, the highest property taxes, the highest, and it goes on and on, payroll taxes. Workers' compensation costs are tremendously high in California because it's driven by politics. So today, and I hate to say this, and and I used to drive by this company every single day, but Hewlett-Packard corporate offices are now moving out of California and over into Texas. They said they had to do it. They could no longer afford the expensive life of operating a business in California. <clears throat> Other companies have done the same. I mean, literally, if you can save up to 32% on operating costs and taxes and red tape and compliance issues and everything else that you have to that you have to do in the state of California, by moving it over to another state, I would do it in a heartbeat, and I did it in a heartbeat. I mean, it took me three years to do it, because I had to plan things out. I had to plan my move to get out of out of California. I wanted to make sure I was in compliance. All my taxes were done. Everything. My uh, employees were all gone. So for the last three years being in Calif- um, being in California, I had no taxes. I mean, I had no payroll. I mean, not taxes. I had taxes, but payroll. I had no payroll because I was literally doing it myself. And I had one girl that came in as a contractor to work with me to help me close this down. But I had to do it. I just could no longer operate in the state of California. It was a burden. When I got out of California, I had this weight lifted off my shoulders because I wasn't going to have to deal so much of my time with compliance issues and operating in California. But it's sad to see HP leave a state that they first started the technology company and the technology business in the state of California. They were the very first ones. I remember when when I first started out, we had HP computers and HP screens. Now these screens were as wide as my desk. I mean and and I tell you they were so big and cumbersome that when you lifted them you almost broke your back because they were so heavy. And they were all kind of a, an orange type screen. But that was how things were done back then. When I learned computing, I'm really going to date myself, okay? 
But when I learned computers, I had no screens. We had these little ticker tapes that we printed out on the side, and that was how we recorded our programs when we wrote, when we wrote uh, a program for our classes. And we had a, a teletype machine in front of us that we would type it in, type in all the code and everything. We were using BASIC and COBOL at that time. That's how I'm dating myself, but that's what we were using at that time. And then... When we said run, <laughs> the program did its thing and it printed everything back out to me, out to us on, on our teletype machines. But it was, a, it was an amazing time because HP and then I, a, Apple came and then uh, who else came? Uh, Microsoft and all these other companies came and all of a sudden everything exploded and everything grew leaps and bounds because technology we have this yearning for technology the problem is is that there's still technology being born in california but it's very expensive because the cost of living there for for office rent and space and and even you know they've got taxes upon your telephones and circuits and everything else they try to tax in california and becomes so cumbersome that everything becomes a compliance issue of trying to keep your company in compliance with the federal and state laws in the state of California. So I'm very saddened to see that HP is is leaving. Tesla is leaving. HP is leaving. A whole bunch of other companies have left. I think there's been like 15,000, 16,000 companies that have left and left California in the last few years because they're going to states that are friendlier to them where a state really wants to have jobs they want to create jobs they want to have people there the taxes are lower look at Texas no state tax Florida no state tax Nevada no state tax Arizona no state tax there's one other I can't remember which state it is at the moment off the top of my head but we've got these we've got these states out there who are very friendly they want you to come they want you to come. Workers' compensation costs are much lower in these states. So New York and California are killing themselves. <clears throat> they're killing themselves because they're so focused on tax revenue generation instead of businesses creating more jobs and, and more productivity and sales in that state that creates more taxes Instead, they chase them off. They chase off companies that are doing a good thing for the communities in California. So they move. <clears throat> and I can understand the reason why. I was, I was at that same situation. Now, you know, I was born there, and I love it there. I love that coastal ride up from Los Angeles all the way up to San Francisco. It's a wonderful ride. If you go along the coast, but it's also very expensive. Because you can't do it very often when you're paying so much in taxes, paying so much in rent, and paying so much in trying to survive in a place where it is pounding on you every single day. I remember when I was uh, starting to close down my offices in Glendale, California, I began to price... Studio apartments. And now a studio apartment is only like 300 square feet. Very, very tiny apartment. <clears throat> it has, you know, a bathroom and a kitchen and a room. Where you have your bed and that's where you live your full time. In Glendale at that time, this was over three years ago. Four years ago now, I'm sorry. It was $1,800 for 300 square feet. And I said, I'm not going to pay that. I am literally am not going to pay that. I can probably save more by just sleeping and pricing out hotel rooms, which I did. But California is driving away good little companies and big companies and big corporations out of their state because they don't care. They literally do not care. They have become so socially driven, so uh, politically driven that they have forgotten everything about what businesses do. 
why it's beneficial to have businesses within your community. So they have all of these pet projects that they spend billions of dollars on. But when it comes to helping businesses survive in a state, they do not care because they don't see you as helping. What they see you as is a revenue generator for them, for their tax coffers. So if they don't care if you're failing, they're still going to come after you. Even now, if you move out of the state of California, they're still coming after you. And I'm a good example, and I'll tell you my my story. Now, I closed my company that had employees five years ago, shut it down. Then I began shutting down my business, and I had my temporary company there. And we began moving everything out of the storage units and begin selling it off and giving it away. And then we had our final tax season there in 2019 for three months. And then everything that I kept was moved here to California. But I had no employees, none whatsoever. My tax returns were filed. They were completed. My company there uh, was dissolved illegally through the Secretary of State. So I had nothing. EDD, Ruthless Organization, found out that I had moved to Florida. And they researched to see what the new name of my company was in Florida. They then... Now remember, I had not had employees, okay? They then set up an EDD account in my Florida company name. And they wanted me to begin filing reports. Why am I going to file reports? I never asked you to open up an account with EDD under my Florida name. Why would I do that? I'm not even operating there. I have no one there working. I'm not conducting business there. But they decided to do that. So every month they send me this report that says, you need to fill out a DE-1. Why? I have no employees there. So I've had a constant battle of letters going to them saying, stop it. You're the one who illegally signed me up as a company doing business in uh, in California, and I'm not even there. I have no employees there. I have no independent contractors there. I have nothing there. I have no property there. I have no business license. I have nothing there. But they come after you. And this has happened to other companies and people as well as they move out of the state of California. California still feels that some revenue is part of their revenue basis. And it's not true at all. And the they are so greedy about this that they hound you and they hound you and they hound you. And it becomes so annoying that pretty soon I'm all, I'm just about afraid that I'm going to tell them off completely in a letter. Well, I did kind of tell them. I said, listen, I'm never going to come back to California. I'm never going to do business in California. I don't even want to have anything to do with California at this moment. Leave me alone. So California, even though that you've moved out of the state of California, they still try to come after you in some way or another. So just remember that. If if you're thinking about moving out of California, expect the Franchise Tax Board or the EDD to try to hound you. Don't have any employees in California. Just don't. It's too much of a hassle. It is a big time hassle with the EDD to have it. And the EDD, let me tell you, they have a lot of problems. But for HP, one of the founding companies of technology in California to finally decide, okay, we've had enough, we've got to move out. It's a big deal. It is a big deal. They have been there for ages and ages. When will California learn? 
How long is it going to take them to finally go into bankruptcy because there's no more tax money coming in because they've chased all of the good companies out? I'm, I'm going to tell you right now that a lot of the business that is done in Los Angeles and in, in the suburbs and down in into uh, San Diego parts are cash-driven businesses. In other words, they're conducting all of their business in cash. It's a sad situation, but it's driven these people to do things that they don't want to do, but they have to do because California has become so aggressive about getting their taxes from people. And listen, if it's a reasonable tax, that's fine. But when it is a heavy laden tax on everybody, from the poor all the way up to the rich, then it drives people out of California. Drives businesses to states that are friendly. Arizona, Nevada, great states. They're very friendly. Florida is very friendly here. And then when you talk about states like California who want to lock down businesses and become more and more stringent upon businesses, it then becomes a power grab. It's no longer about health. It, it, it isn't about health. If you think it's about health, you, you're dreaming. If you think that the state of California cares about your health, as the governor says, wear your mask, wear your mask, but then you see him at a dinner at a very exclusive restaurant in Napa Valley, without a mask, with no social distancing, and with all of his friends, but he wants you to do it. This is not about health. This is about power and how they can control you. So I'm, I'm asking, how long is California going to last, and how long are you going to last in California? That's a big question. Gosh, I'm, I was thinking the other day, if I would have kept my office in, in Glendale, and with that crazy governor, Gavin Newsom, when he's making all these edicts and mandates, I would not have survived. I would not have been able to live on as a company. At least here in, in Florida, we had it for a brief amount of time, and then we stopped it. And I think the whole state has said we will never go under lockdown again. I have stated that message every single day. I will never go under lockdown again. I will never have another government agency try to control my holidays. But still, California is thinking about doing it again. It's on their agenda for the next few days because they have had the spike. Well, listen, this is a virus and you're going to have spikes. It's a virus. It travels. It moves. It breathes. It lives. It changes. No matter what you do, even if you wear a mask, even if you wear gloves, whatever, you are trying to 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 to, to survive this this virus. It's not. It, you get a little bit of protection, but it's not the protection that's going to save you. Because at some point in time, you're going to touch something, or you're going to be near something where that virus is sitting. In fact, maybe even on the desk that you're sitting at now or the bed that you're laying at and the nightstand sitting next to you, maybe it has the virus floating around there now. You don't know. Because that's how the life of a virus is. It floats, it moves, it changes. So you can't shut things down because of a virus. You've got to continue to go forward. We're all practicing safe health. We're all wearing our masks when we go out into stores, into department stores, into restaurants. But let me tell you, I have seen an awful lot of people, hundreds of people, milling around Home Depot and Costco. Hundreds of people in one single space. And yet, the government will not allow you to go to church. Will not allow you to open up your business. Listen, we're smart people. 
we're gritty people. We are the kind of people, we are Americans where we stand up and we say, you know, I know there's a virus, but I'm going to fight the virus and I am going to live on. I'm going to open up my business. So if you have anybody telling you in government, shut your business down, don't. Fight back. Fight back. None of us businesses can no longer afford to be shut down any longer. We have adapted. We have changed our mode of operations from a safe environment, spaces, way we live our lives safely, how we travel safely. And there's going to be ups and there's going to be downs in this thing. But when you take it politically... And you take a virus and move it into the political political realm and try to control individuals, then you're dead wrong. And that is what has happened with California in New York, but especially California. And this is why companies like HP and Tesla and all these other companies are saying, okay, enough of this. We can no longer operate this way. We need to be able to have our offices up and running and going. So we're going to move it to a state that appreciates that fact of our business. We are no longer political pawns in Gavin Newsom's grasp so that he can destroy us. So they move. And I can understand why they're moving. And I think that you probably understand also. So the question is, how long can California last? How, the, how long can they keep going? How long are the, are the people in California going to allow this to continue in California, losing company after company, job after job after job as they go to other states? Something to think about, isn't it? It's kind of sad because, you know, I, I love California. Can't live there anymore because they treat me as a subhuman because I own the company. They want every single dollar that they can squeeze out of me as a company there. We have got to change our way. And California has got to change. If they don't change, they are going to be dead pretty soon. They're going to be a state where... People have looked in, and we're all watching California. In every single state, we're watching what's going on in California. And we don't want to go there. We don't want those homeless on the streets pooping and drug needles on the streets. We don't want that. We don't want to see the homeless living in tents all along the streets, under the bridges. We don't want that. But California does for some reason. No one in California seems to stop it. They try. But government gets involved again and it gets screwed up. I mean, uh, listen, we're going to see it happening in America too because the Democrats in power at the moment have the same philosophy as Gavin Newsom. They have that same philosophy. And that same philosophy has already begun to drive money out of the United States and over to foreign lands. Capital and cash are moving out. Companies are setting themselves up because they're not quite sure exactly what's going to happen with the Joe Biden economic plan. In fact, none of us even know. No one even talks about the economic plan. We don't even know what it is. If you were to ask me today, what is his economic plan? The only thing that I remember him saying... If you vote for me, I'm going to raise your taxes. That's what he said. That's his only economic plan that I know of. Well, so we're into this right now. And I'm afraid that we're going to have the same thing that we had during the Obama administration where we as businesses began to pause and we became very conservative with how we spend our money. Because we're not quite sure what's coming down the road. Life changes with a vote. And that vote that you cast 
for the president this time. Changed everything. We have to take responsibility of our vote. We have to take responsibility of the states that are out of control. Those of you who live in California, it's up to you. It's not up to me anymore. I'll support you along the way. I will support you and say this is the way that what has to happen. But listen, it's up to you to make changes in California. It's up to you in New York to change New York. It's not my responsibility. So let's all wave goodbye to HP as they pack their vans and start their move across country. I remember the day that I was moving out of out of uh, California and I was in my U-Haul truck and I had just gotten out of Palm Springs up to 10 going towards Arizona. And I remember that day so well because I was listening to the radio and they were talking about how in Los Angeles City Hall, they were infested with fleas. And the fleas were because they were infested with rats. And the rats were there because they were infested with homeless eating the garbage. That's what was going on. So they were going to have to replace the carpeting in Los Angeles City Hall because of fleas. And I thought, I'm getting out at the right time. Rats and fleas had taken over Los Angeles because they allowed the the homeless population to grow and take over and to control. And the whole homeless populations grew up, but with no sanitary conditions or anything else. That's what happens. That's what happened. So my dear friends, if you're in California and you want to move out to another state, Don't be afraid to do it. There are states out there who love you. There are people out there in other states who say, come on, come bring your company to Texas, Arizona, Nevada, Florida, whichever other state is tax-free. doesn't have a state tax. Come on, we love you. We'll even help you find a place to put your business. We'll help you. California is not going to help you anymore. In fact, I think they're standing outside your doors right now with empty suitcases waiting for you to leave. (laughs) It's a sad situation. But let us, as Americans, let's not forget that, listen, government is not, we are not working for government. Government is working for us, and we've got to take back control of the government every single day of our lives for the rest of our lives. Otherwise, we're not, no longer going to have the freedoms that you and I both have right now. I can no longer say what I'm saying right now because government will take over. We have work to do, people. If you want to work together, I'll be more than willing to help you and work together on it. But let's get rid of this nonsense. Let's get rid of these mayors and, and governors who have destroyed communities, destroyed states. It's time. It's time. Listen, if you have any comments or questions, send me a text at 818-252-5682. Again, that's 818-252-5682. If you want to know what I do in my day job, go to lodge, L-O-D-G-E dash C-O dot com. You will see what I do there. You'll see some books that I have written. But let's get involved, people. We need to get involved because we have a country to run. Talk with you soon. Bye-bye. This podcast has been produced by Michael Lodge, fully focused on content. God bless. Bye-bye.